May, and it's another month of Punch TV. We have a really cool episode for you this month. Um, we have Theo Keevil and Pat Thompson on, and we're gonna talk about comics. And like, if you don't know these guys, then you don't really know comics in Saskatoon because they're kind of kingpins of making it happen. They both own stores. They've both been uh, hosts of Comic Chat with Theo and Pat for like a couple of decades at least. Um, and they really got their finger on the pulse of what's going on. So we're super excited to have them here and we're gonna talk to them. And we're also gonna show you some footage we got to go to the symphony, they were doing the Star Wars thing, and we really got involved and we had a whole bunch of fun. So we're gonna show you some footage of that right now. This is Mackenzie O'Neill. Mackenzie, who are you dressed up as? Ray from the Star Wars Force Awakens. Is it your favorite Star Wars movie? I don't know. I've seen all of them. I don't really know which one's my favorite. I, I really like all of them. Why did you choose to dress up as Han? Well, um, I, he's sort of one of my favorite characters, and I think he's cool. And why did you choose the Stormtrooper outfit? Uh, it was what was available. <laughs> that is an excellent answer. Are you going to be getting into any lightsaber battles tonight? Well, I see Kylo Ren over there, so possibly. Kylo, what are your plans for taking over the universe? Uh, I'm going to kill my mother next. Wow, that's so violent. Uh, you don't plan to do that tonight at the show though, right? Probably. Do you love Darth Vader? Yes. Is he your favorite character? Yes. He's kind of bad. Are you cool with that? Yes. What is it about Luke that made you want to dress up as him? Uh, really, I just had the things and I had a blue lightsaber, so yeah. Your costume is awesome. Did you make this? I, I made the goggles. I painted them. <laughs> um, what is your favorite thing about Darth Vader? When he's mad, he goes crazy. Behave yourselves at the symphony tonight because Darth is in the house. Brought to you in part by Amazing Stories, providing Saskatoon with comics, games, toys, graphic novels, t-shirts, and more for over 22 years. Online at AmazingStoriesComics.com, in person on 8th Street in Saskatoon. Hello lovely ladies and or dudes. My name is Hank and I just got back from judging some Star Wars costumes with Jody and Sad Face from Manabar at a performance by the Saskatoon Symphony Orchestra. That's right, me, Hank, I was at the symphony, getting my culture on, and today on Tweetbeat, here's everything you should be listening to in music and or song. The Far Field by Future Islands is a passionate, sorrow-filled 12-song experience for your eardrums. Hashtag buy it, listen, love it, 83 out of 100. And for a good time, put on your apocalypse stick and rock out with your friends the Harpoonist and the Axe Murderer. <gasps> Great name, 85 out of 100, get ready to start running <laughs> from the Axe Murderer. Me and that man 
must have been in Nick's cave with his guitar and harmonica bellowing out some raw tunage when they created Songs of Love and Death, 89 out of 100. Blue Grass Conspiracy by Nine Pound Hammer smells of bourbon and sweet southern barbecue. We just want to pour some gravy on it. 82 out of 100. We take a road trip with Greg Graffin to Millport anytime, but he's paying for gas. New album is sharp and humble. 86 out of 100. And finally, Flogging Molly have a new album coming out in June. First three songs, they're available right now, and you know, even John L. Sullivan would say, life is good. All right. That about wraps things up for all things you should be watching, reading, listening to, playing. Please follow at Hank and Kelso and at Shaw Punch TV. That's it for me. My name is Hank. See you next time on Tweet Beat. Tweet Beat. It's the comic chat with Theo and Pat. Na 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 comic book chat. Comic chat with Theo and Pat. Na 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 comic book chat. Comic book chat. Comic book chat. Comic book chat. Comic chat. Okay, I'm here with like the movers and shakers of the comic scene in Saskatoon. This is like the guys who kind of make it happen. Yeah, <laughs> movies and shakers. Yeah, like the distributors, the the main liners. They're they're feeding everyone their fix of comics and have for years and years and years. So I'm really excited to have you guys on the show. Um, we've got Pat Thompson, Theo Keevil. You guys have run comic stores. You have a epically long run of a comic chat with Theo and Pat. How long have you guys been doing that show? It, I think 1927, <laughs> <laughs> before our comics actually existed. Yeah. We were talking about them. Yeah. We we actually actually don't. <laughs> No, uh, we started the show when Theo was doing a, a Saturday night show called Gardening at Night. Yeah, right. and um, uh, he he's popped into my store a couple times, and then he started becoming a regular, and I couldn't keep him out, and he kept giving me money. So one time I said, you know, we should do a, com a show, a radio show about comics, because he was somewhat connected to a radio station yeah. at the time, and uh, he said, no, get away from me. <laughs> Yeah. And but then he felt and then, 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 then he I felt start, sorry for you. Felt sorry for me, and yeah. we ended up doing the show on gardening at night. And then um, he pitched it as a half-hour show, and the uh, other people on the pro programming committee hit the roof. What's next? A show about wrestling, which, by the way, they had yeah. shortly after that. There was there was a short-lived wrestling show that lasted for about three or four episodes. Yeah. So, but the comic show, yeah, kept going and going, and now they just can't get rid of yeah. it. So, well, I, yeah. Well, I think. It's it's been at least 20 years. Oh, more than 20 years. Because, than like, I remember when I was back at CFCR in the day, like, you guys were there doing your show, and that's, like, a long time ago. Right. Uh, does anybody remember what year Collector's Edge burnt down? Oh. Um, 90, 89, maybe? No, it won't be 89. No, before that. Before no, 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 that 94. Was... I bought the what? store in 94. Really? Oh. And we were, so oh, it's, okay. we were doing the radio show, and I went by... That as it was a smoking oh, ruin. Okay, yeah. you're right. It was at least 90 because I remember going oh, in there and asking 90. for uh, eight ball and being told to like get out. Okay. Basically. No, it would yeah. it would have been 95 yeah. or 96 that it broke wow. down. Really? That yeah, late? Because right, okay. I yes, I can I can date that to girlfriends leaving me. Yes. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> well, perfect. <laughs> well, 95. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> and, and I I started working full time at community radio, and at that point I probably hadn't read comics for a couple of years. And then I started going to Collector's Edge on my lunch break. And then, of course, it burnt down, so I had to pick the next best comic store, so I started yeah. going. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to correct you because we were doing the radio show when it burnt down. Like, I were went, we? Okay. Yeah, I, I, came in, I came in to do the radio show, and there was that smoking, okay. horrible, wow. sad yeah. Yeah. smoking hole. You know, I, I was uh, retailing at the time, and people go, oh, you must be really happy that they burnt down. I'm going, no. Are you kidding? Competition isn't evil. It's good. It makes you good. better. And there's all those comics in the store that I never got to read. Yeah. 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 You know, it's it was, yeah. like that's just the sad thing I know because it is. I'm yeah. sorry, um, it's only about the comic books. Yeah. It is yeah. ultimately yeah. right, and yeah. I think yeah. we all feel that I know way. Yeah. When it burned down, I lost a lot of stuff that I've been stacking up and holding on, or they've been holding on to things for me. 
uh, and then I lost them. So I actually stopped buying comics when that, it was such a devastation for me. Yeah. I was like, wow, I don't think I can uh, go on. Yeah. I was giving grief counseling. Yeah. You should have stopped by. <laughs> I, sh I should have, yeah. yes. yes. No, yeah, yeah, bring, your, bring your wallet, I can help yeah. you. <laughs> I, I stopped. It was almost a couple years before I got back into it after yeah. that happened. So yeah, there wow. was a lot of tears. I watched. It. I also watched it burn down to the ground. So it was a lot of tears. Devastating. Yeah. Sad. But Sad. It, it, we're in a, a golden age of yeah. oh. beautiful comics. We all have our collections that we love. Yeah. What was like the artist or writer or character that was like that turned the corner for you where you're like, nope, I'm giving my life to comics now? Uh, you know what? I think I read comics kind of more like just as a kid fan. And then when I started to recognize like, this guy is an artist who has a style that doesn't look like the, you know, average guy. And those guys are all good, but they all kind of draw in the same style. But I think it was Walter Simonson when he started doing Thor way back in the day. Right. And I was like, oh, yeah, because he'd drawn some Battlestar Galactica comics that I think I'd read. I was like, oh, I really recognize this guy. And just something about it, I was like, this guy is... And not only is he writing and drawing, but he just does it in a slightly different way. And that's when I was like, oh, you know, this guy has his own vision, has his own style. And I think there was something about that. I was like, oh, you don't have to draw comics like kind of in the comic book style like everybody else. And I, I, I guess that made me realize that, you know, the art could be taken to the next level and stuff like that. And I think that's that was the guy... Where I was like, okay, this is going to be a lifetime thing, probably, yeah. for me. Cool. And, and for me, I, I couldn't read yet. Uh, I was five years old. I hadn't gone to school yet. And uh, we were in a car accident in Hope, B.C. And Mom was in the hospital. Dad should have been in the hospital. Uh, but somebody had to be out with all the kids because there were six of us, six kids in that car. Oh. Five? Maybe five. I think, oh, what, th what, there's a lot of kids in my family. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, I don't even remember all their names. Anyway, um... Somebody sent a care package from home, and in there was Amazing Spider-Man number six, Spider-Man fighting the lizard. I picked that up, and I'm sorry, but right then, hooked like a pike, never getting off that five of diamonds. Yeah. Uh, I've been a comic fan since the very first one I picked up. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Yeah. Uh, cool, but expensive. Yeah, yeah it is an expensive <laughs> hobby. We all know this. Mm. I had um, to buy a store. Yeah. yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. Right? Okay. We're all in the same boat there. Okay. We're going to take a little break. And then when we come back, um, I want to see some of the stuff from your collection that you've brought that like really means something special to you. So uh, we'll share that with our audience. And you're in for a treat because there's some really cool stuff that I want to steal. With community enhancement as their goal, the Justice League of Saskatoon aims to bring smiles to the faces of young and old. Do you think you have what it takes to join this prestigious crew? The JLS is waiting for you. Visit their Facebook page, JLS Justice League of Saskatoon, for more information on how you can make our city a better place to be. Then grab your cape and fly. All right, we are back and we have some treasures. Um, okay, I have to point this out. This is an issue of Superman that was drawn by Tom Grummet, who's the king. And in it, it's very tiny, but there's a panel in here, Superman's flying past and it says, comic chat with Theo and Pat. Like, how awesome is that? I don't know how that billboard got put up in Metropolis, because <laughs> I don't think they can hear the show there, yeah. but yeah. There was no internet when that happened. Well, this is, yeah, that's true. <laughs> they weren't listening to our show down there. They weren't listening but to But we were advertising online. everywhere. We did have a budget back then. Yeah. 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 Remember when CFCR ruled the airwaves? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Man, they still do. I miss those days. Yeah. <laughs> well, you guys have brought some amazing yeah. stuff. We, yes. or, let's get to it, because like I don't want to miss out on any of this stuff. Um, I think when you collect comics, you get to a level where you like want want to have the art, right? Like that's kind of next level stuff. And yep. some of the things that you brought today well, are amazing. Actually, people just keep giving it to me. Oh, I'm you're, sorry. Then you're yeah. a lucky man. Yeah. That is like, a perk. Lucky, uh, lucky yeah. man. That okay, Theo, show us yep. uh, a couple panels here. Well, this is a Tom Grummet page from uh, an era of Superboy when it was kind of inspired by Commandy, the last boy on Earth. He wakes up, doesn't know where he is. He has long hair. There's talking animals. And I just think it was like some of his best published work. It was just amazing. Uh, Riley Rossmo, another great Saskatoon comic book artist. This is a page from a book he did called Wild Children. 
And I just like all the desks. I don't know. <laughs> something about it is just fun. And the fact that Riley never wastes any paper. Show the back. Yeah, yeah. He always <laughs> is doodling everywhere. He does not waste. It's like two for. You got a two for yeah. price two of one. for the you price of one. For. This is another Riley thing. I, I don't know what it's from. It might be just he decided he wanted to draw a werewolf yeah. creature or something. It doesn't say what it's from on there. And then this one is That's one of my favorites. That's juicy. Uh, Sweet Tooth Page by Jeff Lemire. We did a show with him at Unreal City, and he let everybody pick one page. No covers, but he said yeah. everybody can pick a page. So, I don't know. I, just, I like pages with lots of panels, and yeah. there's, like, you know, lots of pictures of Sweet Tooth on there. Yeah. So that was the one I picked. Those are nice. super cool and yeah. good good additions to any collection. Okay, Pat, what do you got? Well, I have a page here from Kari Andrews from the com a, a short-lived comic. I think it made one issue called Wonderlanders. Uh, the publisher was out of Hong Kong and communication went away, I do believe is what happened. Anyway, Kari in his early, early days. Now, if you take a look at this, this is not exactly at all what Kari's art is like. The detail in this is phenomenal. And out of the comic book, I didn't ask for this page. This was my favorite page in that comic book and this Kari gifted this one to me um, when he had his... Um, opening, I guess. He, he did a show there. I'm going to have to go down. I bought some pages. I did buy some. Sorry. This was from Troy Nixie. This was tryout stuff he did for DC Comics. Uh, I got four pages, the four pages that were the story that he had done. And uh, there's only this one that was inked and it was the title page, but I've got the four of them. And I, I, this is Troy Nixie again, drawing in a style that he doesn't use anymore. Right. And uh, not that I have anything against Kari's new style or Troy, you know, this is just, for me, this was... This was just that beautiful. Yeah. And well, that's about collecting. I mean, it's got to be personal. You have to have a, co a connection to it, right? And that darn Tom Grummet uh -huh. happens to know that I really like uh, the, wow. the Thor stuff. So I ended up with a, a Thor, and I'm not sure. I th uh, yes, there's Hercules on this one as well. Yeah. And I'm happy to say in this one, Hercules actually is wearing clothes. Ooh. So yeah, sometimes sometimes yeah. he does. Thor, uh, Tom does comic books where Hercules doesn't wear any clothes. And this was Chris Steininger. Chris had done a comic book called... Something with elephant. Was it white elephant or elephant in the room? Um, it was about family and stuff that's never spoken about that weighs everybody down. And he came in and did a release on that in my store. And uh, this had nothing to do with that comic book at all. He just had drawn this and said, Pat, you like Conan, right? And I said, yeah. And this is and so this is what he'd given me. Nice. So that darn Chris Steininger. And again, his art is a changed style from this because these are all early day pages. Well, except for Tom's because yeah. those early day pages are a long time ago for Tom. But uh, local artists, and, and, uh, and i got to tell you, I've supported all these guys not because they're local, but because they were good. These guys all did good stuff. The, the Riley pages I have in again walked into the store and said, Hey, Pat, you want, you, you want these? And I said, Yeah. <laughs> Too nice. Yeah. 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 And, That's uh, a perk of having nice. a store, right? It's a perk of having yeah. a store and actually uh, having had all of these people as customers at one time or another. Yeah. You know, yeah. Well, um, I think that's the, the thing. I mean, it's like, yes, you're a retailer and yes, you're a businessman, but it's like you're building a community at the same time, right? And you're part of that. You're integral to like the success and the inspiration of like younger artists and connecting to the, to the community. It's important. It is very important. And, and I guess even if it's not the artists, I mean, how many who would win conversations has there been in comic stores <laughs> from people who have never spoken to each other before. Exactly. You know, or you're buying that? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah, which I, I always growl at because it was close to a sale. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. close. That's, that's, Sometimes that's you have to go comment. beyond that. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah you do. Wow. Well, well our, our time has like clipped by so quickly and um, again, I feel like we barely scratched the surface you know, of some of the things we'd like to talk for about. For a two-hour show, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fast, fast. Hey? Yeah. yeah. So we'll just have to have you guys back on again, but uh, cool. in the meantime, if people want to get a fix and uh, tune in to uh, Comic Chat, right. where and when? 90.5 FM Fridays at 6 o'clock or cfcr.ca Fridays at 6 o'clock. We don't Podcast. We don't podcast, we don't collect the shows and keep them for posterity, which is kind of sad considering years and years ago we had done so many interviews with so many creators. Yeah, and, uh, It'd be great to have that Theo archived. Had, Theo had dug up the, the Neil Gaiman one we'd done from a million years ago and it was great. I had it on cassettes. Yeah, <laughs> yes, because that's how we did them then. Yep. There were, the show was done without no flaws. It was a flawless show every time because we couldn't go back and fix it. Nope. <laughs> the interviews, they ran straight. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. That is awesome. So yeah, no, we, we got to have you guys back show. because uh, you're really an important part of the comics community in Saskatoon and uh, yeah, there's lots of interesting stuff to talk about. Yeah. And we can make up stuff if we want. 
Okay, yeah. awesome. 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 Okay, well, we'll be right back after this. Comic chat, the video and chat. Na 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 na, come up with chat. Come up with chat. Come up with chat. Come up with chat. Comic chat. Punch TV is brought to you in part by Amazing Stories, providing Saskatoon with comics, games, toys, graphic novels, t-shirts, and more for over 22 years. Online at AmazingStoriesComics.com, in person on 8th Street in Saskatoon. We are about to emerge on blockbuster season for movies. There's a ton that is going to be released in the next couple months, and of course we've got our expert, Craig, the movie geek, what's good this summer coming up? Okay, well, I have a giant list, but I, I picked uh, a few that I'm really looking forward to, but we should mention some that I'm not looking forward to. Okay. If you want to give me some, like, thumbs down yeah. action. Okay. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, mm. Baywatch, uh, The mm. Mummy. It might be interesting, but it's this new shared universe with Tom Cruise, I think, is in the first one. Mm. Uh, and one I'm really not looking forward to, Transformers, The Last Night on June 23rd. <laughs> Boo earns. Uh, stuff I'm a little more interested in but didn't quite make the big list is War for the Planet of the Apes on July 14th. Could be good. Uh, that one should be cool. And uh, Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets is is based, I don't really know too much about this one, but it's based on a graphic novel. Comes mm. out July 21st and look kind of interesting. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, so my actual list uh, in chronological order of okay. release, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, May 5th. Obviously, uh, yep. the first one was a real fun space opera and uh, I don't think we're going to see much different in this one. It's nope. going to be more of the same in a good way uh, and plus Kurt Russell. Ooh, you can nope. uh, May 19th, Alien Covenant. Now, bear with me here. I, I, I'm more interested than necessarily think this is going to rock. I mean, I love the first couple of Alien movies. Yeah. I, I actually hated Prometheus, uh, even though it has some brilliant Prometheus stuff in it, but it's got so many plot holes you can fly a spaceship <laughs> through it. So, uh, but it feels like instead of a Prometheus sequel, suddenly he jumped to another like Alien uh, sequel. So the previews I saw looked very similar to Aliens. Uh, so okay. we'll see. We'll see. Give uh, it a chance. And does have Michael Fassbender. So ooh, I, okay, I'm there. I like Michael. Fassbender. I'm there. Uh, so another one that I'm like not super hyped to see, but I'm interested to see how it's going to turn out. June second, Wonder Woman. Ding, 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 yeah. ding, ding. So uh, my problem is uh, mostly with the DC Universe problems. Yeah. They, as far as I'm concerned, haven't really made a good movie. In fact, they've made a lot of bad movies so far, uh, not including their animation division, obviously. Yeah. But uh, so I, you know, I, I'm not, I don't, I'm not really sold on Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman yet. I mean, she did a fine job, but like there was other people yeah. I thought could have been cast. Uh, and I like. Uh, thankfully, Patty Jenkins, the director of Monsters, directing this and not the actual monster, Zack Snyder. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we'll see. Hopefully it's good. I think it's going to be good. Uh, the one I'm really, 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 really looking forward to, July 7th, Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh, yes. I'm a big Spider-Man fan, and it's great to see the rights, uh, all the people that are arguing about rights finally uh, coming to an agreement so that we can pull Spider-Man into that uh, yep. Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe. Uh, Tom Holland, I think, did a great job as a young Peter Parker. Uh, Marissa Tomei may be a little uh, uh, caliente uh, as Aunt May, but... Uh, uh, Michael Keaton as the Vulture, right? Uh, of course, and I, I love the fact, I mean, I hope, I, we obviously don't fully know what's going to go on, but that it's not another origin story. Right. If I had to sit through another Spider-Man origin story, I'm going to freak out. Spider-Man has some of the, the greatest villains, and we never get to yeah, see them because they always get to that. see Uncle Ben getting killed. It's yeah, like, don't sure. care. Uh, a little too much Iron Man in the trailer, maybe, but obviously yeah. they're trying to sell that, so we'll see what happens in the movie. And he's handsome. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, July 21st, uh, Dunkirk uh, from Chris Nolan, the director, obviously, of the uh, Batman yep. uh, trilogy. Uh, a mix of IMAX 65mm and 65mm uh, mm. large format, so like... It should be pretty. Yeah, we're looking at... Some, I'm not even sure that I'm super interested in the movie. It's about the Battle of Dunkirk in World War II, but just the uh, large like yeah. palette that he's going to be using. And of course, we've got Tom Hardy, Cillian Murphy, and Mark Rylan, uh, a couple of... That bodes uh, well. Nolan regulars. And, and the last one, August 4th, the Dark Tower. Stephen King uh, book. Yep. Idris Elba and I think Matthew McConaughey star in that one. Uh, this this property's had a decade of like starts and stops. Mm -hmm. uh, J.J. Abrams, Ron Howard, all kind of guys, all kinds of directors were attached to uh, direct this one. And uh, I really wish they would make The Stand and do something <laughs> like this with it. But uh, and I and I have to admit, like I 
didn't ever even finish the Dark Tower series. Yeah. I read the first few. The Drawing of the Three is the yeah. best one. Uh, but I'm interested to see like if they can pull this off. There's also been comic book versions of this too. There have been, so, and they're decent. And they're decent, right? So it'll be interesting to see if they can do a good job with this. Uh, you know, I, I mean, casting Idris Elba is a good uh, first step. So. I love that guy. Yeah, Stringer Bell is the gun. Why not, right? Yeah. So I mean, Luther? that's. Uh, you know, it's going to be an interesting summer, I think. So we'll see if uh, how that all turns out. Yeah, that sounds good. I'm super pumped about uh, Guardians. That was like the surprise that summer when it came out because yeah. it was fun and light and good and it's like approachable for everyone. Well, and that's it shows it too be. that you can like take a property that's lesser known and do a good job of it and turn it into a thing as opposed to having to, you know, continually rehash other things. Exactly. Yeah, it's good. Okay, well, we'll uh, revisit these as they come out and uh, let everybody know how they actually were, if they were good, if they weren't, if they should be, you know, avoided at all costs or if you should embrace them as much as possible because they're awesome. Summer! Summer, yay! All right, thanks, Craig. Punch TV is brought to you in part by Amazing Stories, providing Saskatoon with comics, games, toys, graphic novels, t-shirts, and more for over 22 years. Online at AmazingStoriesComics.com, in person on 8th Street in Saskatoon. Well, that wraps up another episode of Punch TV. I want to say a big thank you to Pat and Theo for coming on and sharing their treasures and their insights into the comic book world. We definitely have to have those guys back because there's so much left to talk about. Also want to thank Craig and Hank and Tony and our crew. And of course, thank you to you for watching. A couple things you want to remember and put on your calendar is June 17th is the big Humboldt Summer Sizzler Con. And uh, it's a smaller con, but lots of Fun. Lots of artists come out to that, and you can really get some one on one time. So, check that out for sure. And in the meantime, keep your dukes up. Does have Michael Fassbender, so. Ding, 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 yeah, ding, so, ding. Uh